I'm Naomi Hancock at Sub-Zero Ice Cream and I am going to show you how to freeze an ice cream. When you're freezing ice cream, we are, what we are really doing is transferring the heat of the cream into the liquid nitrogen, which then causes liquid nitrogen to evaporate. It's really just a heat transfer. And that's something you can actually explain to customers even as you're doing it. Um, what I've already done is to add the flavors and the cream. This is um, a regular size of cream, so it's six ounces, or I'm sorry, yes, six ounces. Um, what we'll do instead of, what you need to do is to first of all run nitrogen over the top of it. Part of the, our process is to actually freeze the top layer of the cream. Um, if you are stirring while the nitrogen is going in, you're actually losing more nitrogen because it's evaporating faster and your hands are getting more cold and it's, going to, it's not going to freeze as well. You really do want to run the nitrogen first of all. The other, the other thing you can sometimes use as a guide is one, thousand, uh, one second per one ounce of cream. So you're counting like a thousand, like one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four. Um, and you're, of course, just doing that in your head. Now the hard thing is that depending on how busy you are and how much cream you've been freezing, the nitrogen will sometimes come out faster than at other times. So sometimes you really just have to, to get a feel and eventually know um, how much to do or to, how much to back off. But the general rule is kind of a second per ounce. So this is six ounces of cream. I'm gonna run the nitrogen in. Now, because I haven't been freezing before this, there was a little bit of air in that. You could tell that there was a time when liquid wasn't coming out. You're kind of watching that. So I really didn't start counting until the liquid started coming out. And as I'm stirring it now even, I'm going around the side first of all to break that up. And then I'm kind of just moving through it so that I'm mixing the warmer liquid cream with the more frozen. Now I can already tell I'm gonna need more nitrogen. Again, since we're doing this during the day and it hasn't been as busy here, I know it's not frozen yet. So I'm going to add some more nitrogen to that, but I can even tell that even before the, the vapor dissipates, I can tell this is still too soft. And you'll get a feel for that the more that you do it. Now, as I just did that, I counted about four seconds, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4. I can tell now it's gonna be a little bit too hard probably. And I don't want it to get too hard where I can't, um, this is not ideal and you, you don't want to get to the point where you're pouring that off because we're racing nitrogen then. However, you also don't want this to get too hard that you can't scoop it and that it's not ideal for the customer to eat it. So now, this is probably about right. It does seem like it's a little bit crunchy, but I also know that once I start using the water jets to melt it, and once I add the, the mixins as well, it's going to get to the right consistency. So you always wanna have something right in the middle there that's kind of balled up, that's ready. Um, I'm gonna put, what, um, what we do here is to add the mixins after it's been frozen, and I'm just using the, the spade to, to get that off there. And now, I'm gonna add the water jets. I mean, we do have another training video on scooping, but this is part of the freezing process. So. You can tell right around here that it is actually starting to melt. In fact, if you have the water jets in your store, you can give it a, let it let it get a good spin there because that helps. And now part of getting it the right consistency is actually in the scooping. So when you're scooping, you're pushing it into there because it's going to find an equilibrium and consistency as you scoop. I'm gonna add a little more water. There's still some on there that's a little, little hard. And then of course, you're scooping up everything out of that bowl that you possibly can. Whatever is left in the bowl ends up in your dish sink and makes it very hard to clean, makes it very hard to have to change that water all the time. But especially the customer's perception is if you left things in there, that's part of their ice cream. That's part of what they paid for. The more you are working to try and get everything out of that bowl and have it in the cup that you're going to hand across to them, the more you're showing them that 
you are getting them the ice cream that they wanted. No, and that's actually sticking a little too much to itself. And there we go. All right, that is the regular ice cream um, all scooped up. You want to just make sure that if, if it's ball, if it can scoop into a good scoop, you know that it's the right consistency. If it's too soft, it's not going to scoop well. If it's too hard, it's not going to scoop well. You want to make sure that it, it, the, really the scooping part is one thing that really determines whether it's, it's too hard or too soft. And sometimes you're asking the customer if they want what consistency they, um, if you, what consistency they do want, whether they want it hard or whether they want it soft. But for the most part, most people just want ice cream. So you're going to want to try to make it the consistency of hard ice cream. That is our regular ice cream and how to freeze it.